Welcome to the Virtual Fracture Clinic, an innovative way of managing acute orthopaedic injuries. My name is Lucy Arnott and I am an extended scope physiotherapist. The Virtual Fracture Clinic has successfully managed thousands of patients using virtual consultations and a shared care approach. Our objective is to provide you with high quality information so that you can best manage your injury and reduce the need of coming into hospital. We have designed this protocol as evidence suggests that patients typically only retain 10% of the information given to them in the traditional clinic setting. We understand that having an injury has a significant impact on your life, so I've designed this video series to explain to you the type of injury that you've sustained and to guide you through your rehabilitation and management from the comfort of your own home. Hi, I'm James. I'm an orthopaedic consultant and I regularly manage patients with your type of injury. I'm here to guide you through the details of your injury, the treatment required, and give you your recovery plan. You have sustained a dislocation to the acromioclavicular joint. This is the joint between the collarbone and the shoulder. An example of this is demonstrated now on the screen. This is a common injury and it will heal itself naturally with the passage of time. This normally takes approximately six weeks, but pain and swelling can be ongoing for three to six months. Because of the nature of the injury, there may always be a lump in this area. It should, however, not be painful and have no long-term effects. You will have been provided with a sling. This is for comfort only and does not aid healing. This should be worn for the first three weeks. It should be removed regularly to perform the exercises that Lucy will go through later. You may need to take painkillers or anti-inflammatories, especially in the early stages. These injuries require you to have a follow-up appointment with one of our upper limb specialists. This is to ensure adequate healing and in extreme cases, surgery may be required. We would also like you to contact us if you're experiencing significant pain or symptoms away from the site of the injury. One of the only things we know that can slow down healing is smoking. If you do smoke, it would be advisable to stop, at least for the duration of the healing process. Further information on how to stop smoking can be found on the NHS Smoke Free website or be obtained from your GP. You can start driving again when you can comfortably control the car and swerve out of the way in an emergency. Obviously you can't drive if you're still in the sling. You can return to work when you feel comfortable and sports can be resumed at six weeks. Bear in mind though that pain and swelling can be ongoing when you resume impact activities. I'm now going to hand you back to Lucy who will guide you through your rehabilitation. We're now going to show you some simple exercises to help you to recover from your upper limb injury. The first phase of your rehabilitation is about acute pain and swelling management. An ice pack can be applied to the area that is injured, making sure that the ice pack is always wrapped in a tea towel so that there is no direct contact with your skin. We would advise to place this to the injured area for approximately 15 minutes at a time and to repeat this approximately four to five times a day. You should really try to rest the arm for the first 24 to 72 hours. The sling provided offers a good resting splint for your arm, but when you are sitting comfortably, you can remove this and use a pillow to support your arm, which will give your neck some relief from not wearing the sling all the time. It's really important in the first stage of your rehabilitation to remove your sling to do the following exercises three to four times a day. The first exercise is for your hand and wrist. You can move your wrist in an upwards and downwards position, getting a good stretch at that joint. You can also use your fingers to make your fist and splay your fingers. Once you can do this without any pain, you can use a pair of socks that you put into a ball to add some resistance to this exercise. This is really good to help with reducing the swelling that you may get in your hand. The next exercise is for your elbow, okay? You need to practice straightening your elbow and bending it towards your mouth. You may find this a little bit difficult in the early stages, but it's important to slowly increase the range of movement that you get every day. The elbow also works in rotation, so the other way to exercise your hand is to move your hand from facing palm up to palm down. When you've been wearing a sling for a long time, it's really important to think about your posture because you naturally tend to come forward into a position of protection. What I want you to think about is growing tall and bringing your shoulders back so that you get a stretch across the front of your chest.
I'd advise to hold this position for approximately 30 seconds and to repeat this four to five times a day. I'm gonna show you from the side so you can really appreciate this exercise. You tend to be forward in this position and I want you to grow tall and bring your shoulder blades back, holding that stretch for 30 seconds. The next exercise is called pendulum exercises and these are really great for getting some early range of movement of your shoulder and to provide you with the space that you need to get in and wash your armpit. I'd advise to hold on to a firm surface, bring your feet into a step stance position and gently lean forward letting your arm come forward with it. You can then move your arm in a forwards and backwards momentum just like the pendulum from a clock. You can also do this in a sideways movement and in a clockwise rotation. I would advise to do this exercise for between a minute and a minute and a half, again, four to five times a day. The next stage of your rehabilitation is about gently starting to move your shoulder. We do these via exercises known as active assisted range of movements. The first movement direction is to hold onto your hand with your good arm and gently guide it up in the air. I want you to repeat this about 10 times, nice and slowly, really thinking about the quality of the movement. For this first stage, I don't want you to be lifting your arm any further than 90 degrees. The other position that your arm moves in is a rotational way. For this, I would advise to get a stick or something that you can use to hold on to. You place your arm firmly with an overhand grip onto the stick and use your good arm to lever your arm outwards. The important thing to remember with this exercise is that you keep your elbow nice and close by your side. I'll show you this from the side view also, rotating your arm outwards. If you don't have a stick to hand, you can do this quite simply by using your other hand to guide the movement. These exercises you should do about 10 repetitions on both exercises about four to five times a day. The third stage of your rehabilitation is about regaining range of movement and strength in your shoulder. The first exercise is bringing your arm straight up in front of you as far as you can comfortably. It's important that you think of your posture when you're doing this exercise and don't try any trick movements to get further than you would naturally. The next exercise is to rotate your thumb outwards and do a similar movement but in a nice big arc. Once again, just go as far as you feel able to and each day hopefully this will improve a little bit. The third exercise is rotation of the arm. So bend your elbow to 90 degrees and rotate your forearm outwards. With this exercise, it's really key to keep your elbow nice and close to your body. I'd like you to try and do all of these exercises approximately 10 times and to repeat them four to five times a day. Don't be surprised if in the early stages you struggle to get the range of movement of your shoulder. These exercises will take time to develop. If you're struggling with any of these exercises and you come in to see us in the clinic, we can always advise that you see a physiotherapist who can help you with a structured re-strengthening program if need be. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any further questions with regards to your injury or your rehabilitation, please do not hesitate to contact us. Because we value your opinion, in the future we may ask you for some patient satisfaction information. We would really appreciate if you could let us know how you found this service so that we can help model it for future patients.